Hello and welcome to the MVP cast from me, Mark Woods. It's our first one of 2023. A very happy new year. Hope you had a great Christmas break. But important to start the new year and, and thinking about our health and, and about ourselves and how we're doing and how those around us are doing as well. And I, I think one thing I was great to read over the Christmas period is the launch of a new mental health charter for basketball. Now, it's the brainchild of Great Britain Basketball International, our export currently to Saudi Arabia. We'll maybe quite chat about that later. Kofi Josephs and the journalist Ollie Laurie, who join us on the podcast. And welcome to you both. Thank you for having us, man. Yeah, thanks for having us. I mean, it's a terrific idea. And we, we, we talk so much about physical health and we've demo- devoted resources to you know, players' health. And you, you see an injury and you know, someone goes to get surgery or they get physio or they get rehab in some way. But we don't often talk enough within sport and even personally, away from sport, about, about mental health. And, you know, Kofi, you've, you've spoken about this in the past, about you know, your issues and how you've dealt with it. And you've got your own mental health organization called why not i um but where has you know from your background in this why was it so important to have something that's a charter it's set down it's an actual action plan it's a rallying cry yeah i think for everything that i've been through myself personally and obviously from being in it you just hear how much other players I've got to say what they've been through and I just didn't feel like there was set help or guidance for the players it definitely wasn't for me and then for other players I've spoken to they're like nah there's nothing there's been nothing for me and this is not from just one specific team it's from players like in different teams different leagues different levels in the UK stuff like that and I just feel like even from being around the world there hasn't really been anything that I've noticed that's really been there to support the players mentally and as we know playing at such a high level it can be so demanding and then outside of being an athlete life is quite demanding especially for like men as we know how it can affect their mental health but even for like women basketball players like I just want something that's so close to my heart that I've been doing for over two decades that can affect your mental health in such a positive way, but also a negative way. I want that to just really support people um, because it takes up such a large chunk of their lives. Well, you're, you're a journalist and you know, you've, you've touched on these topics, Um, but go to the core of this idea of the charter. What, where did it, or how did it come together? I actually started on Twitter. I know a lot's been thrown around about Elon Musk lately but um there is something to come out of twitter i saw uh, a tweet from kofi actually um talking about expressing frustration really about the lack of mental health provision in basketball and being the journalist that i am or i'm training to be i thought okay well, there's something going on here let's try and dig into what kofi's trying to say so what the players are trying to say and we jumped on a zoom call and i sort of just let kofi talk to me about what was what was going on and what he thought was going on And then it came to me that this was much bigger a problem than I had thought, um, because I'm also involved in basketball, nowhere near. I don't get paid to play in Saudi Arabia, like some people in this call. Um, But I've been playing junior leagues. Um, I'm still playing at university now. Um, And I've seen firsthand the mental health struggles that people in basketball have. Um, And hearing this replicated on Kofi's level as well, made me start to think okay well this isn't just something i've experienced at the low level of the game something that kofi's experienced at the top level of the game and then a bit of research later you see that this is something replicated all over from personal experience and i thought what can i do now um i can either just do what a good journalist does and and write a story on it hopefully people will read it sort of make awareness or take an action and make sure that there's some kind of positive movement on the problem that we saw and that's where the charter came from really I thought okay well I've known about this and experienced this for so long this is happening to other people as well either we can just talk about it and talk about and talk about it or we can actually try and do something about it and the charter is what we are really trying to do and actually um, make sure that the players voices are represented all across the game because it's so easy for people in power and the powers that be to speak on behalf of the people who you need to help. Um, in politics, not just in sport, but in politics as well, there'll be people making decisions 
who don't understand what it's like to be in that position. So this charter really is sort of a harmonization of what the players from so Kofi's experiences are building into this, um, what they want to see, what the problems are and how they see the solution and trying to package that up and give it in a, in a sort of concrete document, concrete steps the organizations can take to actually make change so that the mental problems that, that people go through in basketball um, hopefully won't be a fixture in the next, well, foreseeable future, really. There's a, a phrase you used which really struck me in a, in a piece that you wrote, Ollie, about, about launch in the charter. Uh, I'll quote it here. It was, basketball is facing a mental health crisis, and this is not a conclusion that has been drawn lightly. Now, the first the first part of it you know, of the charter, I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of organized into to four different areas. And the first part is recognizing the state of play. I mean, that's that's quite a tough analysis of where we stand just now. And you're Kofi, you're you know, someone that's got real lived experience about this. Where what is the crisis? What's the crux of that crisis, and why have we got there? From from being in it and speaking to other players, the thing is the thing is as well is people have, have reached out to me who aren't just players that are involved in the British game. It's staff, it's cleaners, it's trainers, it's physios, it's this, it's that. And so many different aspects can affect your mental health, like even from spending so much of your time in a place helping and not being paid or neglecting your children, neglecting your family because every weekend you're traveling up and down, like your mental health can be affected in so many different ways. Um, and just from, from being in it myself, it's crisis might seem like a huge word to people or a bit alarming, but I put a tweet out and I said, all right, cool. Do we have to have as many people dying like they do in football for the crisis to be like, accepted like me personally i would rather we don't get to that point like it is in football do you know what i mean like we don't need to have people dying for people to open their eyes and be like oh there's a real issue because when people are dying it affects so many other people and it just doesn't do anything for our game the british games on on the up right now um and i feel like that is an area that shouldn't be neglected um the crisis for sure is players being paid what they're being paid like that can cause stress the demands of being a professional athlete that can cause stress young men and women not having the tools or understanding their own mental health that can spiral them out of control and then once they're spiraling because of the demands of our profession being so high and there's so much competition you can be replaced like that as we know there needs to be support that can only benefit the players, which will ultimately benefit the teams, which will ultimately benefit the leagues, which will ultimately benefit everything that we stand for. So for me, that's where it all comes down to. When you were talking to people around this, and Ollie, and you you start to capture the stories. And, you know, and I, I've, I've, I've written about this before and I've spoken to people about it. And obviously sometimes you... You hear stories which people don't want publicised, but you, you get more of a sense behind it. But what were the really big, the big issues? I mean, the touch points. You know, we talk about those those moments, and Kofi's touched on some of them there. But you know, those points where people had reached a not good place, and you know, were, were there topics that came up again and again and again? To attack that question sort of more broadly. Um, basketball in the uk finds itself in a really sort of bizarre almost idiosyncratic position in terms of its position in the uk sporting landscape um so it's the second most played team sport behind football which most people don't realize because given the the funding and the the um so the issues that surround the game given how many people participate in it you think there'd be a little bit more um i don't know attention given to it but because of its position uh, and how the sort of governing bodies handle it. There are some really sort of weird factors that, that affect this. Um, let's say, for example, I say Kofi can can comment, but how you have a, a system of care for your players when they'll be chasing contracts all over the world. So I don't know how many countries you've played in in your career, Kofi, but um, if you're playing in GB one year 
and then you go to Saudi Arabia and then you go to Germany for three years and you come back. That sort of ping ponging because there isn't that sort of structure and that system in British basketball will lead to great a great deal of insecurity. And, and that's really what I've seen come from the people I've been speaking to and with my personal experience. It's the insecurity that comes with this. Um, I mean, the average wage in 2022, and there are caveats to this, obviously, but the average wage in 2022 for a professional basketball player was just over £20,000 a year. Um, given the stresses and strains and the rise of the cost of living crisis and everything, um, and the fact that you're an injury away from being sort of released from your contract, that's going to add a lot of sort of mental stress and mental strain to what you're doing. Um, uh, and as I said, to make it in basketball, Kofi can comment, but you've got to be so committed. You've got to spend sort of your life has to be all on basketball to try and make a living out of it. And that means that consumes all of your, your entire identity. And when something happens that means you can't do that or you can't fulfill what you had intended, then you have to take a step back and think, okay, well, what, what am I what am I doing now? I, my entire life was basketball and I'm not being able to make a living anymore. And then it sort of spirals from there. So I would say it's insecurity that comes with the sort of almost the lack of funding in basketball. But it's, I say, Kofi can can talk to this because it's such a complicated picture um, just because of how it's a fringe sport, but played by so many people in the UK. You think with that, I mean, it's it's interesting week, Kofi, because the BBL's announced the appointment of its its first chief medical officer and Dr. Amir Pakravan. So there's an investment in that area at a higher level for the first time that we've seen. And you 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 talk again in the charter, you know, about about making basketball a safe space for mental health. And that's, you know, having that professional look at it and really in I guess that investment in it. What if you're you're speaking to the the new medical officer? What's what's the first step to making basketball a safer space? Not just you know, it might not be an immediate thing to get exactly where you want it to be, but what you know, where's the first step, the baby steps that need to happen? I think it's going to the teams, going to the teams, whoever's in charge of the teams them making it very clear to all their staff and players involved that this is a safe place that mental health won't just be brushed under it's a very it's a very thin line of being a professional athlete because yeah you're supposed to be pushed mentally and physically to get the best out of you but with that can also come a mad decline do you know what i mean and i think players understanding that this is a safe place. Like, yo, if you're not okay, it's also okay not to be okay because a lot of men have got this macho and this ego where they're struggling, they're going through it. And as everyone knows, the answer, I'm fine, when you're not fine, is how the suicide rates are extremely high. So I think the first step is teams letting their staff and their players know that mental health is supported here and that you won't be looked at in a negative way. You won't be looked at as different. You won't be looked at as weak and just making the environment seem a lot safer. Like it might be in mental health and especially in sports, it's very easy for people to be like, oh, we don't need to say that. Like they already know it. Like if they want to come talk to us, they can. Well, just because you think that doesn't mean the people that need help think that too. Do you know what I mean? Because when you're not naturally thinking properly, you're spiraling, you don't want to talk to anyone, you feel ashamed of yourself, all this, that, and the other. So I think making it very clear that this is a safe space, that you will be accepted, that what you're going through isn't any different to what other people have gone through and you're still not going to be looked at as less of a man, less of a basketball player, less of a person. And I think for me personally, when I, when I like, obviously I'm back playing now, that would make me feel a lot better that if I need it, it's there. That's the very first step. I mean, organizations like Samaritans are, are very quick to stress the point that asking people if they're okay or asking people specifically, are you know, are you at risk of doing something that you'll regret or are you at risk of taking your own life? 
in the extreme example, those do not push people towards that. And it's important to have those conversations and not not be afraid to ask. And it's the same if you see a stranger in the street um, mm -hmm. and you feel that they need help. It, it does no harm whatsoever. It is a good thing to, to ask. But you mentioned that locker room culture. And you know, we moved away, I think, a little bit from it, but it's still, it's it's a competitive area. And that applies, I think, for males and females. But is it, it have we moved enough that not only would you necessarily talk about yourself that you would broach that with a teammate or how would you broach that with a teammate because you know you you're since you're you're competing with one another sometimes it's it's a it's an unusual relationship and you know, sometimes an unstable relationship how, how would you go about those conversations with with someone else on your on your team or your, maybe even another team i'm i'm naturally quiet outspoken anyway and I feel like there was a stage in my career even when I was like in America stuff like that the amount of pressure I put on myself and a lot of players put on themselves you you kind of if anything sometimes go within yourself and you get more quiet and you don't want to talk to anyone even your boys you don't want to talk about stuff but you feel like there's just so much air in a balloon that eventually you're gonna you just need to lay it out and for me personally, I would rather now being a lot more mature and obviously going down the mental health route, um, psychology route, blah, 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 knowing that it's best not to let it get to that and talk early. And I mean, it's okay. Like a lot of celebrities, a lot of like the biggest athletes in the world have gone through certain stuff. And it's just, it's just this fake idea that everyone's perfect and everyone's okay. So when you remember that, you're just like, huh, okay, cool. Maybe I can talk to my boy. Maybe I can do this. So I try and lead by example. And I think it's good to have a leader on a certain level. It's one thing for your coach being able to come in like, guys, anyone want to talk about anything, blah, blah, blah. But it's different having the coaches away and someone on the team, like a player leading and being like, yo, I'm stressed. I'm not, I'm going through this. I'm going through that naturally especially with men men start to open up when other men on their level start to open up do you know what i mean it's not the same when someone in authority of you or is in charge of you is is asking you something but if it's at, on a different type of dynamic then i think it definitely definitely helps i just speak i just speak i'm i'm human i go through what i go through i have good days i have bad days and i understand everyone's like that but and at first, oh, sorry, go on, could be. Carry on. I was saying to them, that's the kind of education process of all this, which again is is one plank in your in your charter. Um, I mean, you look at the provisions and what needs to happen, and you know, this this has been a sport, as you'll know, Ollie. That's it's been hand to mouth for a long time. It's possibly changing now, but you know, it's it's been about survival when it comes to clubs as employers. It's been just get get through the year so it hasn't been that investment in these frivolous things like mental health what's now do you think you know this provision that needs to be put in place to to make this better but not not just settle by making it better today but you know to have something there that's that works and benefits young men and women while they're playing but also beyond playing as well it's a I say well, one of the things we're trying to tackle with this is to get a comprehensive answer to that question and I think something that we should stress right now is that what we've created here isn't necessarily a silver bullet for this problem um, we are continually looking to to evolve this we're in discussion with governing bodies about how to do this with organizations about what is feasible in terms of mental health provision and what they need um actually the second step that we're going to go through sort of next week is now we've got a bit of a platform now we're going to extend it out and try and collect data which as yet hasn't really been collected on what actually the situation is as sort of a broad stroke kind of analysis of how the community is feeling about this because we have personal experiences you talk to individuals then they can tell you their own experiences but to make a, a convincing and sort of a, an argument that authorities can't ignore having cold hard data is a really really important step of that um that being said 
in terms of provision, I think um, without wanting to to echo Kofi, I think the so I was going to say again the the financial stability side of things, having the finances set aside for this is such a large issue and it sounds kind of sort of contrite to, to make that point because of course money makes the world go round and there are other things at play here sort of the mental well-being everything but at the end of the day if you haven't got the funding to get people to be in position to help the players then you can have all of the goodwill in the world um you can make all the commitments you want but if you're not actually gonna you know walk the walk then the benefits don't actually reach those players so i would say in terms of the provision needs to be made safe spaces definitely we need to get to a point where you can go and approach a staff member and your first question or your first priority is okay how am i going to protect my well-being by talking to this person rather than thinking will i be compromised will my spot on the team be compromised will i get less minutes because i'm talking to this person um so safe spaces are really important um and it's about, you know, all of this about education as well. I know Kofi's been involved in Why Not I. Loads of other people involved in education. It's about teaching people from a young age in a meaningful way what mental health is, how to protect it. Um, because if you start young, then it won't get to the point where you're sort of stuck in the cycle of being in that position where you feel like you can't talk to anybody. Then your game gets affected or whatever you're doing, not even basketball, you're, whatever you're doing gets affected. Um, so there are so many different things that you can provide we're trying to tackle a few of them that's a little highlight of it but yeah this is definitely a work in progress and we're we're, we're chasing better not perfection the aim is obviously perfection but right now progress is progress and um, we're aiming to get more progress but for now any positive benefit we can have then we're going to run with it strikes me as I a think... great opportunity isn't it for basketball though because you know we talk about basketball being the sport that to use the calls per so he refreshes the you know the parts that other sports don't get and it's a, you know it's an opportunity to reach young people and it's a vehicle to reach young people i mean they're, they're, if we think of the benefits of this if basketball does this well the impact on young people could be huge mm -hmm. it's crazy because if you like if you look at young people playing basketball now in like 10 15 years they're going to be the adults and it's a cycle that just goes like that. Like I look at young kids playing basketball now and I'm like, oh man, they look at me like I'm the old guy. They come to me for advice. But I remember the other day when I was them asking for advice, like it really is a cycle and they're going to be the next generation. So I feel like it's our responsibility to, to if we're aware of a problem now, we have failed if, they still have the same problem when they're our age. Do you know what I mean? Like, if we're aware, we have to help them because then when they're at our age and at this level, they can help tackle different problems and then that's how everything elevates in the right direction. But what I think is super important is it's not only about the players. I've spoken to staff members. I've spoken to coaches, assistant coaches, everyone's going through mental health and that's why i say it's a mental health crisis because it's not just the players like coaches are going through what they're going through people are going through what they're going through men women and that's what makes a crisis when it's on such a large scale and in our sport fortunately in a way it's people aren't dropping like flies and aren't killing themselves but it's also brewing under the surface which is also just as bad I would say and I think just like any other job career whatever staff members go to HR or go to somebody you don't go to your boss if you have a problem with your boss because that can be very sticky but for us basketball players if we do have an issue with our coach or whatever the person that we're told to go and speak to is the coach. And now you can have brewing anxiety because you don't know how your coach is going to take it or how shall I say it. You can't naturally go in there and just let steam out and then go back on the court or talk to your coach or actually find out if you're in the right or the wrong, which is super important. And I think now that we've got the funding, like the league, BBL definitely got the funding now, as we know, having 
not necessarily external people coming in, but bring an external person in to the clubs. That's there. Like I've got a psychology degree and it helps seeing a counsellor more than once because you start to build a relationship, you start to feel comfortable, you start to reduce your own wars and actually get to the root of your own issues. But if you have a token person come in two times a season and the two times the two different people, you're just like, mm, they don't care. They don't remember my name. What's even the point? Do you know what I mean? And you feel like they're just ticking a box. It's not about ticking a box because better mental health creates better players which create better teams which hopefully is better performance and then it's just better overall because these players as well are people and when they're not playing basketball they're looked up to so you them being in a better mental space helps technically the world because you don't know who we're influencing or what we're doing do you know what i mean and that's why i say it's just super important across the board can i add a point on Young yeah, so I was just going to say, though, well, the last part of this is about activism. And Ollie, you've, you, you talked about, I mean, Kofi's talking there about the BBL, and that's just one plank on this. But when you, you're looking at the sort of the stakeholders and the roles that they have to play, I mean, there's a bigger picture here, obviously, you know, our you know, NHS supporter, you know, GPs, everything, a good, you know, way beyond basketball. But when you've spoken to people, you know, you could look at federation, you can look at different ways around. Where's, what's the big picture here, do you think, in terms of linking all these things together so that we create a sort of ecology and ecosystem that works? I think it's a very, very good question because this is all, as you say, it's all interlinked. This isn't just a, a crisis in basketball per se. We're focusing on basketball because that's sort of our experience, our shared experience. But this is reflected in wider society. And as I'm sure we're all aware from the pandemic, especially, there is a, a, a mental health crisis brewing. There is, it, you try and get a, a counseling appointment via the NHS, for example. Um, I know from personal experience that it's six months at least on a waiting list. And if you've got a problem now, um, then you're not really gonna, I say, just say, oh, just wait, hold on for six months. We don't know what's gonna happen in those six months, if that makes sense. Um, so in terms of bigger picture, this definitely fits in to a wider question on how sport can help fix or help mental health outcomes um, for people in the United Kingdom. Um, I just worry that there aren't enough voices necessarily promoting the, the mental and physical benefits of open and accessible sport because you have um, so many studies telling you about the benefits social, physical, mental, whatever, of sports. And yet you see time and time again that you don't necessarily have the access that, or people don't necessarily have the access to those sports unless you're willing to pay more money than you should probably reasonably expect to, or there aren't enough clubs in your area or you can't travel to the clubs to play because of poor transport links or, or whatever. Um, so it definitely fits into the, the, um, the uh, wider picture. And then the final thing I'll say on that is that there's a um, um, a certain level of sort of retrospective action here where not in just basketball, but in the society entirely, um, it's absolutely vital and I completely agree. It's absolutely vital to have things like Samaritans, lines to go to when you are in crisis and you need help. But we also need to recognize and appreciate that intervention is one thing but prevention will stop us ever needing to intervene in the first place. Mm -hmm. And if we can reach a point where we have put in the, in the safeguards, not just basketball or the mental child for basketball, but generally across society, be the NHS or whatever, if we put in the safeguards that say from a young age, let's educate, let's put people on the right path to knowing how to handle their mental health well, then those things like the Samaritans helpline and everything will still be there and they will, not everyone will get sort of, they'll still be useful, obviously. But then we can start moving away from the idea that we wait till everyone's in crisis, then we find a solution, which we're having to do now, we and Kofi are trying to do now. We can say, okay, well, let's not even get to the point of having a crisis. Um, and I think that's something that society can take forward. Um, how that happens is definitely, definitely, definitely above my pay grade. 
but it's certainly something that I think we should, in an ideal world anyway, um, should be considered because, I mean, that's the ideal, right? Not having this crisis in the first place is, is the whole point of this. So. And I think, you know, you look at, there's been a lot of talk lately, as you said, about cost of living crisis and the impact that has on even grassroots sports and young people and where, you know, yes, it's physical well-being, but there's the mental well-being part of that. And that's, you know, that's under threat at the moment. And it's it's terrible. And it is something that really does need more action. Um, last one kind of on this, the charter. I mean, it's it's been out a few days now. It's sort of getting out there. Um, what's the reaction been like? I'll jump in very quickly. Kofi can can talk about um, how he sees it. But um, given the position that we're launching it from, um, I'm extremely surprised, shall we say, at the response that we've got from it. Um, well, for example, the fact that this podcast is happening is a very nice surprise because we sort of threw it out there, realizing it'd be a process to try and get people to respond to it because... And Kofi's got a, a certain platform. I don't really have any platform at all. So to try and get some some response from it was the first thing. But I haven't had any any responses other than sort of positive, appreciative of saying this really needs to be looked at. Thank you for taking the time to try and actually make a difference on this. Mm -hmm. And even more more sort of positively, I guess, stakeholders within basketball have since contacted me to talk about how best to approach this and say, okay, well, this is really good what you're doing. From my point of view, from my perspective, I think you could be helped by doing this. And that's one of the draws for, for making the, the leap to try and collect sort of broad consensus data on everything. I've been in touch with a, a PhD candidate who's looking at a mental health and elite sport, and he wants to get involved and, and try and help sort of guide the, the academic background and the scientific basis from which we're working. So more than my wildest dreams we've received so much um so much support and so much love for this which has been crazy but um but i say kofi can talk about this but this is just a start like we've we've made a little a little impact by now like in terms of the people who've engaged with it but the whole point of this isn't just to to get clicks on on linkedin or or instagram likes it's more more deeper than that and um and i'm, I'm committed to making sure we go as far as we possibly can um and i won't be able to rest easy until we've I know that, that we've tried everything to try and make this better. Definitely. Like, where I normally come from is I like to ruffle feathers and I like to poke the bear. Like, I've got no problem with that. But it comes from the right place. But it's definitely had a positive um, response. And obviously, a lot of people see stuff I'm trying to do anyway. But then seeing this shows, like, the bigger picture and the direction we really want to go and how we're trying to go about it um so yeah i've been happy with it so far and there's so much more that we're going to do we're just scratching the surface so even with me being out here like i feel like very far away rather than being in the field but it's nice to just see people talking about so people sharing it people being like you're right people being like i felt like that and i'm i'm so happy um and even like people who are a lot older talking about seeing things like this makes me want to have my grandchildren playing like playing basketball in the UK. That's very nice to hear. That's very nice to hear because a lot of people talk about, oh, I, would, I don't want my child to go through what I went through. But if they know there's mental support, then we're definitely heading in the right direction because we've got a great sport, great country. Um, so yeah, it's nice to be a part of like a positive change rather than just pissing people off. And I can't, I can't let you go with like reference inside it. I mean, you, you, you beat Cristiano Ronaldo there by a few weeks. I mean, he saw what you'd done and you decided, yeah, Kofi's there. That's where I've got to be. Uh, what's, what's hoops like over there? <laughs> you know what's funny? Yeah. Obviously, I've just been modeling. That's like modeling and my mental health organization. That's really been it. Um, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with basketball. But then I got blessed with this opportunity and I just thought, yeah, the first thing I'd saw about Saudi was Cristiano Ronaldo's potential deal. And I sent that to a couple of my friends that was like, yo, that's crazy. Imagine then I was like, if that was you, would you go? And then next minute, I'm getting a call from Saudi like, yo, we want you to come out here. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I had plans, modding campaigns, stuff I was doing, why not I? 
but it's just too good of an opportunity to miss. I've never been to the Middle East before. And it was nice to actually like jump back into basketball on the international stage and just, yeah, be, be in this life again. It's been a little while. Like, I haven't played outside the UK. I won't ask you if you're getting 250 million on your contract, but you know, I'm sure you, you've got a smile on your face. I'm sure it's quite close to that. Um, all right. <laughs> anyway, we will be the if you want to read the mental health charter, we're posting a link near this in our socials, and um I'm sure we'll be more about it. Um, of course, if you've got any issues, you can go to people like Mind and some and you can look them up online, and they have got lots of other resources if you are struggling. But Kofi and Ollie. Thank you so much for coming and talking about it. Good, it. What a terrific idea. I hope it blows up and achieves the good it's supposed to be. But thank you both for coming on the MVP cast. Thank right. you so much for watching us, man. It's great. That, that is it from this edition of the MVP cast. If you want to get our previous editions, head to our website at mvp247.com or go to your preferred podcast provider. We will have another edition of the podcast coming very soon. But for me, Mark Woods, thank you so much as always for listening. And it's goodbye.